day that we were taken into the nurses' break room on 4A at, at University, uh, Fairview University Hospital, and told by the doctor that uh, Tyler was not going to survive. That was uh, that was so far out of our frame of reference. Even by then, it was how can we give up? How can this fight and this kid not win? We took her into the doctor because she had a cold, and they did a chest x-ray, and the doctor thought she had pneumonia. So we went home, we had antibiotics, and two days later the doctor called us back, and he said that there was a mass in her chest. You're thinking the worst things. I was thinking, you know, how long are we going to have her? Is she going to have to suffer? Their lives that have been normal a couple hours before, it's everything that they wanted to do with the plans, you know, for what they want to do. Everything is shattered. Everything is gone in an instant. They will never be the same. Their family is never be, gonna be the same. So you have to make quick decisions. I mean, you're a parent and you just want the best for your child. And, and you're scared and you're worried and you're just, you're definitely in shock. Sarah never really regained consciousness, um, and then she just died peacefully in her sleep. And I don't want people to feel sorry for us, because we don't need that. What we need are, are people to feel motivated, to feel angry that this has to even happen. We're going to look back on this time and look at what we're doing now, and it's going to be equivalent to bloodletting and leeches. Right now, when we use chemotherapy and we use high-dose chemotherapy, we're basically using the equivalent of a sledgehammer to kill a housefly. Um, and unfortunately, the aim is not so good sometimes. Even though we've made tremendous strides, we have a long way to go. And even though we are now curing the majority of children, it's cure with a cost. And there's still about 20% of children we don't cure. And so even though we love to talk about our success, there's an awful lot of work to be done. Sometimes I think when she's going in for treatment, you know, I'm taking my daughter in to get her body injected with poison. The hard part and the part that always gets me is when I put my hand on the, the, the clinic door or on their room in the hospital right before I have to go in there and tell them that it's back. That's the hard part. The most important thing that should dawn on all of us is that if a child with cancer came to my office, to an office of any of my colleagues 50 years ago, they would be given a death sentence. They are, for all practical purposes, they are dead at the time they got their diagnosis. There was no hope. There was zero survivors. So the absolute unimaginable progress that has occurred over the last 50 years that now makes a childhood cancer treatable in nine out of 10 children, and a bone marrow transplant that's given to 50,000 patients a year as a life-saving measure that has to be one of the best stories in medicine ever this is on par with discovery of antibiotics of heart surgery this is one of the best successes in medicine to change the fate of people that were doomed at the time that they had diagnosis This September, they considered him cured. They straight up told us that. Uh, it's such a aggressive form of cancer that um, there's probably no chance of it coming back now. 
Um, they said we might have to deal with some other stuff, but brain cancer out the window, I'm fine with that, and it's pretty cool. In a sense, it's, it's just it's such a great outcome and a great story, one that we feel so fortunate to be able to share with others and knowing how um, donations and how money helps to find cures so that you know kids can be cured and, and it worked for our child. And without that research, without those caring people donating money, that doesn't happen. And there's, you know, there were a lot of other kids up on that floor that didn't have the same outcome that we had. Mm -hmm. There's still so much work to do to find cures to children's cancer. I'm very hopeful, and even in the little more than a decade that I've been doing this, that the cure rates have still continued to rise. I am hopeful, I think within my lifetime, that childhood cancer will be a manageable disease, one that we will be able to cure the majority of children of, and that we will hopefully someday have a world free of childhood cancer. I hope that she grows up in a world that doesn't have to have kids getting cancer, that someday she can tell her, uh, her kids or her grandkids, you know, I had cancer, and then have to explain to them what that is in a world where they can say, I don't know what that is, or, oh, that's back when people had that. And she can say, yeah, you know. And then they'll say, well, you're really old, Grandma, or something like that, because that won't be something that little kids will ever have to worry about again. When that five or six years are done, and there weren't any more tumors, I'm going to imagine this flock of about 100 doves just flying in the sky, and that's going to be this release of some of the stress and maybe some peace brought back to our family again.